No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Tiano, your host today. We're glad to have you join us here on God Answers Prayer. There's a scripture that's found in Romans 15, 13. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His superabundance until you radiate with hope. Many of you are possibly aware of one of the greatest issues facing the nation today. It is an issue that literally hurts Yahweh's heart. If we dig deeper, we realize it is here in our own backyard. Becky Harada has been working since 2008 to bring greater awareness of human trafficking and how Yahweh led her to begin a ministry and a podcast to educate New Mexicans and beyond. Thus, the name Beyond Borders Ministry. We'll be right back with Becky after this. Here's my 
Welcome to God Answers Prayer. Rebecca Harada, Executive Director of Beyond Borders Ministry, is here with us today. Rebecca, it's so good to have you. It's been a long time. Since it has you been. Were with Thank us. you. I, I uh, really just enjoy the fact that you're that you're willing to talk about this hard subject. And oh, absolutely. It needs yeah. to be talked about. And yes. you know, I mean, we're living in a day finally where it's really beginning to come out. I right. mean, the the vastness of this sinful thing that is going on against children right. around the world. Around the world. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's unbelievable. But tell us a little bit about yourself, because it's been a while. <laughs> yes. And um, how did you come to the Lord? Well, I came to the Lord when I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. I was in a church service. We were actually having a, um, a revival at, at the church that week. And um, I started to go forward on Sunday morning, and my parents held me back because they wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing, you know, and it wasn't just going up because I wanted to go up, you know. Right. So I, uh, um, so the next night, because like I said, it was a revival, so they mm -hmm. were having services every night. Um, my parents must have been working in the nursery, I guess, because they, they were at church, but they weren't there with us sitting there. And when that invitation started, I zoomed up to the front. <laughs> Nobody was stopping me, so I went, I went up front. And, uh, and you know, my parents explained that they wanted me to talk to the pastor first to make sure that I knew what I was doing. And um, I didn't wait to talk to the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so they just had me go in afterwards, and he said, yes, yeah, you knew what she was doing. So, um, and it was really funny because when I think back about that situation, even at the time, um, I felt like I heard an audible voice from God, you know, go forward, um, accept my son, you know, and, uh -huh. and um, I was kind of surprised that nobody else heard the, vo the voice, you know, but yeah, here I am many years later, <laughs> still, still trying to serve God with everything I can do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you, you obviously had a good upbringing. Yes. In the faith. Yes. In uh, church, every time yeah. the doors were open. <laughs> right. So um, tell us about what happened to you at 17. Well, at 17, I was in, um, actually, it was a youth service uh -huh. where the youth had taken over the service. And um, I just really heard God call me into missions. Now, at that time, I was in a church that only married women could go on the mission field. And, of course, at 17, I wasn't married yet. Um, and so I kind of just put that on the back burner for many years, actually, um, I'm trying to think what year. I think it was 2002 that I 
that I actually started Beyond Borders. So it was many years later, and um, uh, I was always doing things, but you know, like like helping other ministries, you know, going to feed people, that kind of thing, you know. Uh -huh. But but I didn't actually start Beyond Borders until about 2002, 2001, 2002, somewhere around in there. So, um, but at that time, I heard him tell me I was going to do missions, and because I had started doing um, short-term missions already, uh -huh. I thought that Beyond Borders was going to be a short-term missions. Right. But uh -huh. um, in 2007, I think it was, um, or eight, one of the two, I heard Christine Kane speak about um, uh, human trafficking at a conference in London. Uh, that was done, put on by the Hillsong Church there. And so I, um, I heard about it, and I got home, and I thought, well, you know, I'm a nurse. I can go volunteer for a month or so over there, you know. And I started researching and finding out that human trafficking is something that happens right here. Yes. Right in our own backyard. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So that's when God kind of changed what I was doing. And I'm not saying that I'll never do short-term missions again, but... But it's not at the top of my list at this point, right? So, so, so tell us about New Mexico when you t talk about right in your own backyard, right? Um, I, I think people are are aware on some level that some level. trafficking is going on. Yeah. They think it's like the movie Taken. I, I, did you see that movie? I don't think I did. Oh well, it's one where um, uh, a girl and her friend were going on, I guess, their senior trip, and um, they went to Paris, and they were stolen for, out of the apartment that they were in. Mm. And, and that's really not the way it happens very often anywhere. But here, the sad thing that's going on here is that we have so much poverty in our state, and so parents will sell their children, which is really sad. And then, of course, we have the border. We're, what, maybe three and a half, four hours from the border. Uh -huh. And we all know what's going on at the border now. So there's children coming over that way. Um, but most of it is going to be a family member that's, that's trafficking them, which is really sad. Yeah. Really sad. <clears throat> I can't so imagine. They, they, they make, make money off of it. They make money off of it. And sometimes it's just to support their family. Sometimes it's to um, buy their drugs or you know, alcohol, whatever they, whatever they choose to use as their um, uh, escape, I guess you'd say. It's so sad that people are so lost. Yes. That they don't know what is righteous and right in their lives. Right. And when they're offered an opportunity to, to do something, then they're willing to just go with it. Right. Regardless right. of the consequences. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I, drug addiction is horrible. I mean, it's, it's absolutely one of the worst things uh, in our world right now, I think, because the people that are addicted, they really, they, they just can't seem to really get out of it. Mm -hmm. unless, they, unless they become a Christian right. and rely on Jesus. Now, the, those, the people that I've seen that have done that, um, they will get out of it and stay out of it. But most of the time they just won't stay out of it. It's just it's just so much a part of their life that they it's their escape. You know, it's how they escape the problems of life and it's just a horrible thing. It's just horrible. So how do you deal with that yourself? I mean, knowing the statistics. <laughs> Uh, probably very, very poorly. You know, it's really funny because um, when I first started doing this, I really wanted to do something really bad to the traffickers, you know. <laughs> but um, as time has gone on, and I, you know, God started saying, you have to pray for those people because mm -hmm. they don't know me, you know, and they're, they're living away apart from God. And so he started showing me that I have to pray for them. And it really has changed my attitude. Um, I really did want to hurt them before, <laughs> but I don't. I don't want to hurt them anymore. I just want to. I just pray for them, and because most of the time they've had abuse in their family right. growing up, you know. So it's 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 kind a of vicious all they know. circle. It, it is. It's a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. So, 
how how do you rescue people? I mean, how does that look? You know, um, I haven't actually worked on the in the rescue part of it uh -huh. yet, um, but until they're ready to be rescued, it's really hard. Yeah. I've worked with uh, youth in um, one of our youth shelters here in Albuquerque, and unless they want something, it it doesn't. They just don't do it. They just won't. They just won't do it. And that's even for adult women that are uh -huh. that are uh, um, entangled in, in human trafficking. Until until they can say no more, um, they're not going to leave. They're not going to leave because the, the the traffickers do such a, a good job at brainwashing them. They you know they tell them that they're going to hurt their family or they're going to uh, or they beat them or I had one young lady that I. Um, I actually had a recording from her. She helped some kids I was working with at Highland. They were doing their DECA project on, on human trafficking. And um, so she did an interview on the, over the phone with them. And um, uh, she was beaten with a hammer. Oh. I know. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the things that these, that these young people go through, is, it's atrocious. I mean, it's terrible. Um, and they, but until they can come to a point where they can say no more, is they're not going to leave because they've been brainwashed. It, they've been told uh, nobody's going to love you. Um, uh, we, I'll I'll hurt your family. I know where they live, and so you know the traffickers really use um, a lot of of threats to mm -hmm. keep them there. You know, right. So beyond borders, tell us exactly what what you're doing. Okay. With it. So um, I started out after I had gone to that conference. Mm -hmm. I originally started out um, just doing awareness talks um, uh -huh. at churches, at women's groups, any place that would let me come and talk about it. Um, I started out that way, and then um, I'm trying to think of the order that I did this. Uh, then we started actually to get to get into the international area, which is our most vulnerable area, mm -hmm. um, we started feeding the homeless down there because um, it, kind of, it got us into the neighborhood where pastors and, and people from different churches um, uh, got to know us. Yeah. So they, they could you know, introduce us to different people and it's right. been really good for connections. Um, so we started doing that, gosh, probably six or seven years ago. And then um, from that, um, God gave me the idea for Backyard Broadcast New Mexico. Um, he led me to a group in Utah that's a Backyard Broadcast group. And the whole purpose of that is to, to educate our youth about human trafficking and how they can avoid it. And... Um, and to mobilize them to fight it. So, um, like, uh, right now I'm only in one public school because I can't get an answer to approach the principals. You can't approach the principals in APS unless you have permission. I've been trying since April to get permission, oh. and it hasn't, it, they haven't given me permission to, to do that yet. I got into La Cueva kind of a roundabout way because, um, I went to talk to a class there, and um, and the teacher said, "Oh, I'll sponsor the group because you have to have a sponsor in the school." You uh -huh. know. So anyway, um, I started that at La Cueva, and they started out um, um, working towards a memorial first in the in the House and in the Senate, the mm -hmm. State House and Senate, to. Um, make it mandatory that human trafficking is taught in our schools. Uh, not human trafficking, <laughs> but fighting human trafficking yeah, fighting. Uh -huh. is, is taught in our schools. And we didn't want to put any more uh, work on teachers. So uh, what we were promote, promoting is, well, they could either come up with the curriculum themselves or they could use one from A21. Um, I think maybe Shared Hope International has one too. Or they could use one um, from another organization here that, or they could ask somebody from one of the organizations to come and, 
and speak. Right. And, you know, either they can use something outside of the school, um, the school's curriculum, so they could still teach it and educate our kids about it. Um, so they worked on the memorial. Unfortunately, the memorial got passed in the education committee on both the Senate and the House, but it wasn't... Um, um, it what did, they didn't give them enough time. It was a it was a shorter session that year, I think, and it didn't give them enough time to vote on it, vote on it on the floor. So it didn't actually get passed. But um, since then, we've just said we're just going to go straight for a bill. So that's what we're hoping to work on this this winter is getting a bill passed because this is a long session. Yeah. Um, so that definitely we can use prayer for. Mm -hmm. um, and we can um, uh, get it passed where they um, have to teach about human trafficking in, in the schools. So we pray that, that Yahweh opens doors yes. that no man can close and that Amen. he will close any doors that he doesn't want open. Amen. So, Amen. yeah. So please uh, keep Becky and uh, Beyond Borders in your prayers. One of the things is, the, is how to recognize. Yes what you know the what kind of things are out there that speak to human trafficking so that you know young people would go, would, would go like oh no 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 yeah um there's there's actually a lot of things that you can be looking for to um to spot it um our truck stops are just yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're hotbeds. I mean, yes, they are hotbeds. Thank you. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. They are hotbeds. And, um, you know, if you're at a truck stop and you see a young girl going up and, and going to the different trucks, uh, mm. whether they get into them for a while or whether they don't, you can probably say that's going to be a traffic, trafficking situation. Mm. If you're in school, because it, it's happening in any, every school in our state, um, no, maybe not elementary school. Not even elementary schools, because there was that case a couple years ago, mm -hmm. the seven-year-old that was in uh, the teacher's class, and the teacher, I think, had, I think she had, if I remember right, she had called, I guess the AG's office, I'm not quite sure. She'd called somebody before, and uh, what made the situation so bad was when she called the second time, and whoever came out, the law enforcement came out, they were complaining about her because she had called. And this was the second time she had called. But this little girl had bloody underwear mm. at seven years old. Uh. So it just... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, that's another thing. Our law enforcement has to take it serious when, when a teacher or a counselor or something calls. They right. have to take it seriously and check out the situation. Um, and I know it's probably a touchy situation to go to parents and say, uh, what are you doing to your child? Or are they in the uh, care of somebody else that's doing something to your child? Um, I'm sure that's a touchy situation to go to, go, to have to go out and do. Well, it takes a lot of courage, especially I know in northern New Mexico that there's a lot of incest. Yes. And things going on. Um, and it takes a lot of courage yes. to stand up and speak up and, yes. and to stop that cycle. Right. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. It's a, it's a whole cycle, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, and the, the, uh, the young women that are um, basically raped at a young age, they don't know anything else. Right. So they, you know, they grow up and they, um, you know, sometimes they get out of trafficking, but then they'll go into prostitution because... Mm. You know, they just don't know anything else, right. you know. Um, the young men, a lot of times, if they've been trafficked as a, like as a child or a teenager, they will become a trafficker, a, a trafficker because that's, they've seen how much money their trafficker makes, and it, it's appealing to them, and they don't know any better, you know. Right. So the whole, um, I think the whole thing that uh, we can do to end this and I do believe that it can be ended. Um, you know, God did things to end the, the slave trade back in the 1800s. Right. If he ended it then, he can end it now. 
And I think I, I, I very, very much believe that my God is bigger than <laughs> any trafficking situation that's out there, you know. Right, and he right. Can, he can end it. And, and I think the key to ending it is educating our youth from a very young age. Yes, yes. You know, um, <clears throat> teaching them, you know, like in the younger, younger ages, probably all of elementary school, it's more of a, you know, if somebody's touching you here or touching you there, you need to tell your, I, I mean, your mom and dad or, or a teacher, teacher or somebody, somebody, somebody you know. Somebody you trust. Yeah, yeah somebody that you can yeah. trust, um, depending on who's touching them in the wrong way. Right. Um, you need to you need to tell them and and uh, find someplace else to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. whatever. Well, we're going well, to be talking more. And uh, again, I just ask that you pray for Becky and for Beyond Borders. Uh, because, you know, as we listen to what she's saying here, the bottom line is that these people need, they need the Lord. Yes. They need to know that they're valued. And maybe you're one of those people that has been in a position and you don't understand that you are really and truly valued. Actually, in the Word, God calls us His own special treasure. Yes. And when we understand that and that we're precious to Him, then we don't allow things in our lives that would do, do anything against that. Yes. So uh, we've got a prayer line. It's mm -hmm. at 505-345-4165. And you can call us Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We want to pray with you. You're not alone. If you're out there, we'll pray with you. We'll pray the Word of God with you and speak it over you. So give us a call. It's, it's an honor and a privilege. We're going to be right back with more after this. Are you feeling lost and alone? Maybe you're feeling closed off from the world right now. Do you live with little hope? Our prayer partners are here with a word of encouragement and to lift you and your needs up before the Lord. Please reach out today by calling 505-345-4165. We care about you. Call 505-345-4165. I'm back here with Becky Harada, Executive Director of Beyond Borders Ministries. Uh, Becky, um, I know we were talking about the children, the young people, the teenagers, and it, it goes, <clears throat> it knows no bounds in age, right. really. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> but it doesn't. They, they really like <clears throat> the children. They do. They do. The average age um, that a girl can enter um, into trafficking and I'm talking about traffic. I'm not talking about just being molested at home. Yeah. Um, is 12. Wow. Yeah, that's young, you know. They're barely, barely, barely entering into those teenage years. And, yeah. And, and the sad part is they really usually last about four to five years. And after about four to five years, they will either commit suicide mm -hmm. or they'll die because they've been beaten or they'll die of uh, malnutrition because wow. they're not fed very often. Um, so you're talking about, you know, these young women, they're gonna be dying by the time they're, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. And uh, it's all because of the way they're treated. Um, which is like, like we've said, it's horrific the way they're treated. Well, and I mean, the enemy of our souls mm -hmm. wants to destroy Futures. Exactly. He, he uh, you know, he wants to destroy what uh, the p potential that's there to right. make a difference in the world. Yes, yes. <clears throat> he doesn't want that difference made. <laughs> so no. yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say. So um, we were talking about the backyard broadcast, mm -hmm. and um, my goal with backyard broadcast is to have it in every middle school and high school in our state. So if somebody's listening out there, they can contact me, which I guess you'll have my contact up, I think you said. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can get something started in, in your schools. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what does that look like? It's, it's a podcast. It's no, right? it's no, no, actually. Okay, this um, is in, in person. Yeah, um, so we'd have to <clears throat> do some work to find somebody in their community because I can't travel the whole state. You know, during one week, you know. So they meet once a week, mm -hmm. 
and they have different um, projects they can work on. They can make a film, they can um, uh, work on legislation, they can work on um, uh, community outreaches to bring awareness to it. They, there's like on the, on the flyer, you'll see there's like a whole list of mm -hmm. things they can, they can um, focus on with their group. Right. So it's not gonna, it might not look the same in any one uh, school, but they'll meet on a regular basis. And once a month we will meet on, on Zoom, so we're all together, you know, and talk about, you know, what, uh, what they're doing. You know, each group could talk about what they're doing. And uh, but we meet at lunchtime. So it's a very short meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we, at La Cueva, we meet at, at lunch. And, um, and like I said, they're working on, um, on the legislation. The other thing that, that they're working on right now is um, one of the girls is working on her gold award from Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, do, I know very little about it. They didn't have gold award, awards when I was in Girl Scouts <laughs> many, many, many years ago. Um, but um, she is collecting toiletries to do bags for teens that are on the street. Uh -huh. So um, somebody wants to donate toiletries to us, they can contact me and we'll get the toiletries to, to her so she can make these bags. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, because really, I mean, with all of these these projects, you're empowering the young people to, to do do something that can make a difference. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> and that's really what we want we want them to to get out of this backyard broadcast is that they can make a difference with little things. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be, you know, something major. It's it's little things. Now, my ultimate goal is to have Hope's Home, which will be a home for minors that have been trafficked. Okay. Um, I don't want to take government money because I think there's too many stipulations religiously, you mm -hmm. know, wise. So I don't want to take government money. So um, I'm looking for resources for that. Um, I want it to be outside of, of Albuquerque because there's too many... Um, things that could entice them to run away and and just re-enter the life yeah. then um, inside in in here. So um, maybe as far east as Moriarty, um, the Edgewood area somewhere in there, or or possibly south of here towards Las Lunas. But I wanted to be in such an area where there's there's land to develop a whole um, complex. Yeah, whole complex <laughs> and. Um, and we're, I mean, we can start with a smaller house, you know, with just a few girl, a few kids. But um, so I wanted to be able to to grow and to offer different things for the for the kids, so uh, they could heal. You know, it, yeah. it takes a while for these kids to heal, and they don't always. Sometimes those kids are the ones that are misbehaving in school, sure, because they don't know what else to do. So um, um, this way, they could. They could um, hopefully school at home for a period of time, and um, I don't know. I don't know what CPS has. Um, I'm sure or CYFT probably has regulations as to them being in school or something. But I would hope they would let them school at home, mm -hmm. and so they have time to heal, and therefore be more productive in school. So. <clears throat> what ages are you looking at with all of this? Well, I think it's kind of hard because I keep hearing a younger and younger. I think I was really um, beginning to, when, when I first started thinking about it, I, I was thinking like 10 to um, 17. Mm -hmm. And then at, at 18, they could go on to another house if they needed it or whatever. Um, but then I keep hearing about younger and younger kids. So I think I would... I might still let them, so my ultimate goal is to have the house or like a complex that the younger ones stay in. And then as they, as they heal, having little, like little apartments to where when they get to be a little older, they can learn how to budget money and, and um, pay bills. Mm -hmm. and so they have like little apartments, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's down the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a worthy cause, you know, yeah. to reach out. Because these children get snatched, or, or yes. young people, and 
<clears throat> of course, many of them didn't have a healthy environment anyway. Right. But right. then there are those that do. Do that's yeah, and they get. Um, oh, well, there's a, a lady out of Texas that um, uh, she has her doctorate in linguistics, and she has spent time looking at how traffickers um, coerce these girls. Uh -huh. And she's come up with what she calls hook words. Mm. And it's, it's actually not necessarily words. It might be a phrase that they can use yeah. to, um, to convince these girls to, to meet them if it's online or, or um, just what they use to convince them to think that they're their boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these girls go into these relationships thinking, oh, we're going to get married and have the 2.6 children. And I don't know how you have a 0. 0.6 child, but, you know, that's what they say. It's 2.6 yeah. per family, I think. Um, and the little white picket fence and cute little dog running around. You know, they, th they have this picture in their mind of this wonderful life with this person. And that, that's part of the grooming process. And, and they, the trafficker will let them think that for a period of time, um, maybe, maybe a few months or maybe even up to a year. And then that's when they start saying, well, you know, if you really love me, you'll go do this and sleep with this guy. So, um, and they, these girls don't get paid for it. They have a quota they have to bring in at night and they, they can't come home until they've met that quota. Wow. Yeah, it's really, it's bad. And another thing, too, that um, I don't know what proof they have of this yet, but um, all these corners that have so many people standing on them asking for money, mm -hmm. that's supposed to be another way they're trafficking people right now. Really? Yeah. So um, I would say, um, just from my observations, these corners that have three or four at the intersection, you know, mm -hmm. I would say that's probably a trafficking situation. Wow. Um, now, I don't have any proof of that, so, <laughs> but, but I, my guess would be that's a trafficking situation. If it's just like one lone person out there, I'd say they're doing it for themselves. But, but when there's three or four of them, I'd, I'd say that's trafficking. Wow. So, um, so, then, so then after Backyard Broadcast, um, a few months ago, I started uh, End It Now New Mexico, which is my podcast, and I've interviewed different people, and um, um, hopefully, what I'm hoping with that is I'll get it spread across the state. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm kind of hoping with this, <laughs> with this broadcast, is that it'll, it'll, it'll aware, make people aware in other parts of the state, because yeah. I don't know how mm -hmm. else to get it out there that well, you know, that fast. So, right. Right. So, um, uh, so that's my, my hope with that, just bringing awareness and talking to different people about what they do. We're getting ready to interview a man on Friday who's out of Arizona, and, she, and he has a, um, an organization called um, Just Men, I think, Just Men Arizona. And, it's, and they actually try to intercept... Um, uh, buyers before they actually buy the girl. They're, they're trying to intercept at that point. I think they do use like fake accounts to, to um, make it appear like they're a young girl and then they're, they're intercepting there um, and they try to use instead of the, what did he call it? Um, there's something in shame. You know, there's, there's cities across our state our um, country that will post, will, they have like billboards, and they will, if a man is arrested for um, um, soliciting a prostitute, especially a child, they will put their picture up. Well, he doesn't want to use the shame type thing. He, he wants to try to get a little bit more of a human. Mm -hmm. um, so instead, he's like, uh, do you have a daughter or do you have a sister, you know? And, well, this, this is what, you know, you could be buying somebody that's the same age. So um, he's trying to do, do it in a little bit more humane way. Right. Um, instead of just shaming the person. So, and I don't know which one works the best, but I hope that both of them work good, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. You just kind of have to 
to decide, I mean, at any given time. Yes. What's yeah. going to fit best right, in right. the situation. Right. Um, so this, this podcast uh -huh. that you do, mm -hmm. tell us about that now again. Yes. We're going to be, um, like I said, interviewing this gentleman on Friday. Uh -huh. um, usually they get up a couple days after I um, do an interview. Um, I had to take a break because of being out for a while health-wise. So um, it's, I think July was my last one that I did, and I'm just getting back into it now. And um, it's just to bring awareness to what's going on. And um, so far, most of the people that I've interviewed have been here in, in, in this part of the state. Uh -huh. I would love for it to get, if there's people in the southern part of the state that is uh, fighting human trafficking, then I'd love to be able to interview them, you know, so people can know what's going on right. in their corner of the state. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of new. Um, I'm not really great at the podcast yet. <laughs> I say, um, way too many times. <laughs> and, and my production manager has to go back and cut them all out and <laughs> make it sound good. But it's, but it's been fun to get to talk to all these people. Um, the Republican candidates for governor before the primary uh -huh. all came on and and uh, let me interview them and tell Good. And so yeah so they were able to tell uh, what their plans were if they were elected mm -hmm. so um, I invited uh, Governor Grisham but she didn't ever answer me so <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah um, yeah. so how do people sure. how do people find out about your podcast where can they go they can go to anchor dot com and they can and end it now just put in end it now new mexico actually it's end it now nm if you're typing it out oh, you know. okay um uh and and they should be able to listen to them they can go back and listen to from the first one on you know okay good yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah that's that's been our podcast and then last christmas um we started what we call the best christmas party ever we, um, you know, like, like we've been talking, a lot of the problem are families that, that um, um, traffic their kids, and it's because of the poverty levels. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we went to um, one, brand, one church that's down in the South Valley and one um, elementary school that's in the Northeast Heights, and we said, give us your kids that are not going to have a good Christmas. And uh, we do it on the, on the 23rd of December. And uh, we provide, we, we get to talk to the kids so we know kind of what they want. Mm -hmm. And we get them hopefully what they want if we can find it. Yeah. Um, and we, um, we invite them to this party. And at the party we um, provide a meal. We had uh, Mike Baca came and, and uh, did Christmas carols oh, for yeah. us. And I'm hoping I can get him again this year. And uh, then we had uh, Peggy and Keith Cox that owns Escape in Time. Uh, they also do Santa pictures. And you can bring your kids there and have their picture taken with Santa. Huh. But we had them come. So Mr. and Mrs. Claus came. <laughs> and uh, they did a little craft when they came in. We had a little area where kids could sit down and um, hear a story about Christmas. And, um, and then we served them the meal. And we don't. We don't give them the gifts that night. We give the gifts to the parents, so the parents can, if they want to put their name or Santa uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah, they, that's a you good know. idea. Yeah. Well, and we didn't want the, we don't want any glory for it. We want God to have the glory for it. You know. Amen. Yeah. 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 And um, and that we we can definitely use some help with that. Uh, we need financial help with it because it costs a lot of money to get all these <laughs> gifts. And actually, I was just talking to the counselor at the school yesterday. And she has 25 more kids. We already have probably um, 65 kids that we're helping. And um, she has 25 more that have not been picked up by any other organization. There's, I think, one or two other organizations that are going to this school, too. Mm -hmm. And she's got 25 more kids that aren't going to have a Christmas without some help. So I, I'm believing that God's going to bring in Amen. enough yeah. Uh, in the way of donations, whether it's a gift or whether it's, um, you know, finances and we'll go buy the gift, you know, whatever. Um, 
he's going to bring in enough money to take care of these 25 other kids. <laughs> so um, the Christmas party was the last thing that, that we really started doing that was trying to reach out. And the, the purpose of this Christmas party is for us to kind of get to know the, the families uh -huh. so we kind of can uh, see if we think there's things going on. And, and really what I've been looking at for this year is ways we can communicate with that family during the year. You know, so it's not just a once a year thing. Right. It's, it's um, yeah, a Yeah, to continual. establish those relationships so you can follow up with them. Yeah. 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 That's great. And I know they get follow up too at school. Um, the counselor that I'm talking to, uh, she's a wonderful lady. Uh, and I know she follows up with these kids a lot. But she, if she's already got 25, we've already gotten at least 25 names from her. And she has 24, 25 more that has it. That's 50 kids. And to keep up with 50 kids. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> and we don't, when we, when we talk about how many kids we're doing, uh, we don't just buy the gifts for the kids that are in that school. We get gifts for the whole family, the, the um, siblings of the Oh, the, the, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so if maybe older, we can younger. talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Okay. Sounds um, great. And we'll let you know how you can be a part of all of this, to be a help and to be a blessing. But we'll be right back after this. Are you feeling lost and alone? Maybe you're feeling closed off from the world right now. Do you live with little hope? Our prayer partners are here with a word of encouragement and to lift you and your needs up before the Lord. Please reach out today by calling 505-345-4165. We care about you. Call 505-345-4165. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Rebecca Harada, Executive Director of Beyond Borders Ministry. And we've been talking, Rebecca, about the uh, this Christmas season and how people can help. And, of course, we know this goes on year-round. So, I mean, if you're tuning in and you're thinking, oh, this is just about Christmas, it's not. It's, an, it's a 12-month it's a month type thing. It, it rotates all the way through every single year, and they always need help reaching out to these these young people right. so um but the so the christmas uh gifts people can what call you they can call me or they can um um email me and um i can give them a specific child that and tell them what they what they've said they want okay um like i was telling you my my daughter does these these Christmas parties, and she put a thing on Amazon, to like a registry, uh -huh. and they can go in and, and pick. And I think I'm, I might do that for, so people can um, buy them a little easier on Amazon and just right. have them shipped to my house mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, we we do a wrapping party uh, a couple of days before the before the party before the actual party. I think we're doing it on the 20th this year. We need help wrapping gifts because. That's a lot of gifts to wrap. Because <laughs> we don't always get just one gift per child. Uh, we kind of make it a, a, um, a money thing where we keep them uh, pretty equal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and my daughter has added on some bigger gifts that like, so say like a girl asks for a Barbie doll, uh -huh. uh, maybe the camper or of one of the dream houses or whatever for Barbie. She added those on. And they're, those are more expensive toys. So um, it could be that a couple people go in together right, and, and buy it together. And I'm not sure if she got that fixed on the um, Amazon app yet, but um, she was working on that. So, so you could just go in and pay for part of it, you know. Right. Um, but we need financial help. We, we provide um, a meal for them. Uh, we have to rent the place. Um, and then, of course, buying the toys. The other thing that I'd really love to add this year is to be able to get a um, gift card for $50, $60, somewhere around there, for a grocery store so the parents can go and shop for a meal for mm. Christmas Day. Yeah. You know, um, that would be really awesome <laughs> but I mean, just the toys in themselves you know is that's a lot of of finances there. so basically people can sponsor 
yes. toys yes. for the kids. They can also sponsor with the parents with the groceries yes. to help them to provide a, a happy meal. Yes. Not, 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 <laughs> not a happy not meal, a happy but meal, a happy but, meal. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So what else would you like to share with our audience about what you're doing and how people are, you know, being trafficked as well as recognizing the signs. Yeah, recognize um, the signs. I think that that right now is, is such a big issue of, um, so any youth group that would love for us to come and talk, yeah, we can do that. And if it doesn't fit into my schedule, I have people that it could fit into their schedule right? and come and talk about it. Um, so that's one way that people can be involved is making it aware with their youth, whether right. they're in school or whether it's a church group or whatever. Um, the other way, of course, is a Christmas party. Um, if they can go on to anchor.com and listen to the podcast, we always have um, some way of contacting me on that. Okay. Um, the, the backyard broadcast, I think, is the biggest thing because to get that into to the schools, that's going to ensure that the kids get um, educated about mm -hmm. trafficking and what to look for and what to be aware of when a trafficker approaches them. Uh, the internet, you know, there's there's been so many good things. You know, there's there's a lot of good things that happen through social media with spreading God's word. Yeah, <laughs> but there's also a lot of bad things that go on with social media, and and these kids need to understand that so many of these profiles, if they have somebody that that is not somebody they know personally, they could they could be posing as a teenage girl, yeah. but not really be a teenage girl. So, um, uh, you know, there, there's so much to educate them about in our world today. And um, the Backyard Broadcast actually is what will really get the education out there. Good, and, good. Yeah. And, um, and then, like I said, the, the financial support for the Christmas party, um, there's different ways they can, they can send me the cash through Cash App or Venmo or, or PayPal. And... Um, and we just uh, put it into my uh, business account and, and use that to buy what we need to buy. So, And, and the, the bigger picture is, is even uh, not just the kids that are maybe in a position where they're being trafficked or being affected, but is for young people to recognize the signs of grooming. Right, right. That's a, that's a big thing right now because... If they don't recognize it, they're going to probably, nine times out of ten, they're going to fall for it. Yeah. You know, it just, uh, these traffickers are not stupid people. No, and if it sounds too good to be true, then it's probably not, not true. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm. So, um, yeah, the education is just so important for our kids. Yeah. Uh, for them to know and to and to know how to fight it. And to know who to turn to. And to know who to turn to. Yeah. yeah. Right. And actually, um, if you suspect something, you can call the Polaris. You can look up Polaris, and there should be a, a national hotline number. But here in New Mexico, we actually have a 505 Get Free a number that they mm -hmm. can call if they suspect anything. And, um, and they have people that can go check out the situation. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Okay, well, but, you know, praise God that you've answered the call. <laughs> and um, Sometimes you, it's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a big, big job. Yes. But we serve a big, big God. And we do. And he really <laughs> wants to see these young people delivered from this yeah. evil that has come against them. Right, because um, it's, it's ruining a whole generation, really, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids are being trafficked and... And being taken away from God. Yeah. And, and that's the most important thing. is, And that's why I was saying when I have a home, I don't want to take government money because right. I will teach these kids about God, yes. about Jesus, that they have a Savior, you know. So that's why I don't like government. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you've got a website. I've got a website. It's uh, www.beyondbordersministries.com. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And it's kind of a real basic website right now. Um, a new person um, set it up for me. Uh -huh. So it doesn't tell everything that we're doing. But, but it has contact there. And it right. has the donate button, too. Good. So they Good. can donate through there, uh, which I think goes through PayPal. And, uh, and they can get contact there. So. Well, like, like I said earlier, prayer... Prayer is always the key for any it organization. Is. You've got to have a foundation of prayer. Yes. So please keep Becky and, and Beyond Borders Ministries in your prayers. Maybe you have been affected in your family or in your life with uh, the trafficking things that are going on. And your heart is to see this ended. Mm -hmm. uh, go online, check them out, see how you can get involved, how you can be a part and help. And uh, also go to her website, check yes. out all the different ways that you can be supportive financially and otherwise. Yes. So uh, I want to thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's you know it's it's a it's a real heavy topic. It is. It is. It really is. Um, One that people don't like to talk about. No, much. they don't. Mm -hmm. And and yet, parents need to be aware. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think about. Children are, you know, they're so free and yeah. they just, they'll just take off and, they, and you know, yeah. parents are trying to keep a rein on them. Right. Uh, I remember when my daughter was young, she always was running and hiding oh. in the circular um, racks of clothes. Oh. And I had, you know, and I, and I couldn't find her. Yeah. And I said, baby, I said, you have to understand. Yes. I said, you can't do that. I need to know where you are. All at all times, times. Yeah. and um, you know, so yeah, you can't. It's not that we can't trust our children; it's we can't trust, trust other, other people. people. Yeah, yeah. I had um, a daughter that was that never knew a stranger. Yeah, she <laughs> could talk to anybody anytime about anything, you know? <laughs> and uh, would tell them her whole life story. So, yeah, you yeah. have to be careful. And, yes, <laughs> be, be cautious. Yes. And guarded. Yes. Well, thank you again for being here. And, and I just you're wanted to say to you, if you're out there today and you need prayer, you can give us a call. Yes. Um, we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to pray the word over you. And I want to leave you today with this word. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace. Shalom, shalom.